Welcome to episode 125 of 10 Minute Record Reviews. And this time I'm going to review kind of a weird album, which is uh, Humble Pie's Lost and Found. This is actually a re-release of their first two records by A&M, a label which picked up their catalog once their original label, Immediate, had folded in 1969. This is the first US pressing of that re-release, and it includes their first albums, as I mentioned, As Safe As Yesterday, which was their debut, and Town and & Country, which was their immediate follow-up. These two albums, of course, were released within four months of each other. What happens is the debut comes out in August 69, the label starts to get into financial trouble, they rush out the second record in November 69, hoping it will chart to keep the label alive, but it doesn't sell enough copies in time, the label goes tits up, the band is left without royalties, without income, in comes A&M, picks up their contract, picks up their back catalog, and then decides in 1972 to release in this package, Lost and Found, As Safe as Yesterday in Town and Country. Humble Pie was founded by Steve Marriott in 1969, after the breakup of his first ever band, The Small Faces. The most famous lineup of The Small Faces included Marriott on guitar, Ronnie Lane, who was basically his fellow creative spark on bass, Ian McGlagan on keyboards, and Kenny Jones on drums. And the group recorded four albums between 1965 and 1968. The last of these, Ogden's Nut Gone Flake, got to number one in the UK. Sadly, however, for the band, it just flopped in the US. It got to number 165, I think, on Billboard. On top of that, because of the complex arrangements in that album, the band couldn't really reproduce it on stage, and Steve Marriott was starting to feel kind of frustrated by this in late 68. He wanted to bring in a fifth member, a second guitarist, and the person he had in mind was Peter Frampton. Frampton at that point was in a band called The Herd. Marriott invites Frampton to come and gig with the Small Faces, which he does in October 68, but McGlagan and Lane in particular were quite resistant to the idea. And it all boils over New Year's Eve 1968 when they're playing the Alexandra Palace and Marriott basically storms off stage never to return. Well, he does return shortly thereafter because they've got a bunch of other contractual gigs that they have to satisfy. But basically, from New Year's on 1969, Marriott is out of the small faces. After Frampton had been rebuffed by the small faces, Marriott had been trying to find Frampton in his own band. He lined him up with a guy called Greg Ridley, who played bass, who was in a band called Spooky Tooth, and another guy, a drummer, Jerry Shirley, who was only 17 years old and was in a band with a strange name of the Apostolic Intervention. When Marriott basically self-ejects from the small faces at the beginning of 1969, he then joins up with them as well, and the four of them start to rehearse and plan and write to become this new group, Humble Pie. There are two albums here, and they're recorded almost back to back, but they're quite distinct. As Safe as Yesterday, the debut, has got six songs by Marriott, two by Frampton, one joint composition, and they also do a cover of a song by Steppenwolf, Desperation. This is recorded in August 1969 at Olympic Studios in London by Andy Johns, his older brother Glyn, of course, much more famous producer. I don't think he covers himself in glory on As Safe as Yesterday. It is very muddy. It is very shallow sounding. The sense you get here is that the band felt they could just show up, plug in, and excellence would ensue. And I think a better producer, a stronger producer, would have actually expected more. There's a lot of sameness to this record. There are some left turns, like there's a bit of sitar and flute at points, but these don't really seem like they're integrated into the whole. These just kind of seem like oddities. For the most part, this is kind of a noisy mess of a record. There are a lot of moments here that seem kind of derivative seeming. There aren't a lot of great hooks. There aren't a lot of great riffs. There aren't a lot of great melodies. It really is kind of lacking. Town & Country, of course, is recorded four months later. It's only released in the UK, and the label, Immediate Records, then immediately goes under. This too is produced by Andy Johns at Olympic Studios. He does a lot better here on this record than he did on the previous one. For this record, because they were kind of under the gun to put it out, they reached back to a whole bunch of demo material they had developed in the early part of the year while they were rehearsing and forming up the band. Steve Marriott had a cottage in a place called Morton in Essex, and they did all of the writing basically in the arranging of the album there, and then they decamped to Olympic Studios to do the recording. As I mentioned, it's mostly acoustic as a record. There are a couple of electric songs to balance it all out. There's country, there's folk, there's blues, and a couple of harder rockers. The version of As Safe As Yesterday, which is in here, is the American version, not the British version. That's meaningful because instead of Ian McLagan's song growing closer, in the American version, there's Natural Born Boogie. The album starts kind of strangely, I think, with a cover, the only cover on the whole record, which is a song by Steppenwolf, Desperation. This is basically a long, loud lament. The primary word that kind of pops up when I'm listening to it is dreary. Peter Frampton's stick shift follows. This has got Steve on slide guitar, acquitting himself, I think, much better than he did in the first song. 
It's not a bad tune, um, but it's nothing particularly memorable either. Buttermilk Boy is one of these songs which seems derivative in a few ways. First of all, it's kind of got a riff almost exactly like Born to be Wild. I feel this is kind of a B-movie version of Ronnie Lane's Ooh La La. An improvement still, but uh, still not great. Then we're on to Natural Born Boogie. This too has derivative moments. It sounds a lot at points like Oh Carol by Chuck Berry. It also has a turnaround lick, which is very similar to the one in Revolution by the Beatles. But still, it's pretty good boogie rock. This is a song you want to turn up, and there are not too many of these on there. The final song of side one is As Safe As Yesterday, the title track. It's a long, kind of loud lament on being left. It just doesn't really encourage you to return to it. Side two starts with bang. I'll just say this sounds noisy and sloppy. And then a very weird tune, Alabama 69. It's this kind of ersatz Americana, which would creep up now and again on Humble Pie Records. I don't want to go on about cultural appropriation, but let's just say there are a ton of things lost in cultural translation here, a ton. The only other notable song left in the record is a track called I'll Go Alone by Frampton, which has this really kind of startling, actually, if you've sat through it to this point, piece of sitar and flute by Lynn Dobson. It then completely changes track and becomes a bit of a rocker, and like the other two pieces that follow, it's just kind of sloppy. Town & Country, recorded four months later, is comparatively a breath of fresh air. It starts with a Frampton song, Take Me Back, and instantly the production is better. It's warmer, it's crisper, it's cleaner. The song works around bass, acoustic guitar, and percussion, and it's completely charming. Next song is a Marriott song called The Sad Bag of Shaky Jake. It's another piece of, as you might guess from the title, Airsats of Americana. It doesn't quite flop as much as the prior one does, but it still lacks that air of authenticity. Things improve, though, with a Ridley song, The Light of Love, which has Marriott sitting in on sitar. Next song is Cold Lady by Shirley, which is his first songwriting contribution. Got a Wurlitzer piano, which adds a very distinct flavor to this song. And with Marriott providing a really good vocal performance about singing to a different partner, this really works as a song. It's an excellent piece. And that's followed by Marriott's Down Home Again, which is one of those songs about the rock and roll life, the temptations of the road, the comforts at home. Unlike the first album, where there was so much self-indulgence that it really got kind of tedious, these are all of Marriott's impulses much better channeled and the product is excellent. Final track on side one is not really a track, it's like 50 seconds of silly noise called Ollie Ollie. Side two starts with yet another piece of Airsats Americana from Marriott, Every Mother's Son, and it kind of is what happens when somebody who doesn't really know a country writes songs as if they're from that country and it just comes across as just kind of ridiculous. I won't belabor the point about lyrics other than to say that I don't think riverboats actually travel through bayous. All that said, there's some great work on guitar, particularly by Frampton on acoustic, and I think better lyrics would have elevated this into a pretty darn good song. A slight step backward with the next song, Heartbeat, which is a cover of the Buddy Holly song, whatever the crickets managed to achieve doesn't really happen here. Marriott's guitar lacks really any delicacy and kind of drags the whole thing down. It's a bit of a disappointment. Only You Can See by Frampton is another rock star's lament. Nice guitar work, let down a little bit by lack of melody, but still a pretty solid song. The songs in this record get more electric and heavier as the album goes on, and that's true of the second last song, Silver Tongue, which is kind of a throwback to the first record. It's kind of too bad that the Silver Tongue of the title didn't actually write the lyrics, because there's some head scratchers here. I have the love of an elf and a dove and a woman. What's that about? Anyway, I'm glad it's not six minutes long. The album wraps up with Home and Away, which is a group composition, kind of an up-tempo number about missing your baby, some nice guitar work, Bit of a mess, which in fact kind of sums up this phase of their career. But overall, this record is significantly stronger and has some genuinely good songs on it compared to its predecessor. How to sum up both these albums in this one package? Well, the first one, As Safe As Yesterday, is where Humble Pie anticipate the hard rock of the 1970s, but don't really perfect it. It's got some plainly derivative pieces. There is not much discipline shown in the production choices. The production itself is muddy and generally substandard. I can't give this record more than two and a half out of five stars. Town & Country is picked from music developed in an earlier period of the band's history. For whatever reason, this is much fresher. It's much more delicate. It's got much more dynamic range between heavier songs, but also a lot of lighter acoustic songs. It still has some of the pathologies of the band, which have to work themselves out. But in general, it's definitely an album worth seeking out. It's four stars out of five for me. And if I were the buyer, I would not seek out this collection. I would seek out an individual release of Town & Country, even if I had to get a later reissue.